beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Crystal the Gypsy, and I love to travel and I love to smoke. So just know that this is a 420 safe space and we're gonna smoke. I travel wherever the wind blows me and the smoke takes me. So let's just say things will probably get a little interesting from time to time. If traveling, seeing new places, and smoking weed interests you, then hit that subscribe button because I'm here for you weekly, sometimes more, and it's completely free. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons. Tell your friends. Now get those joints up, blunts out, and let's go have a good time. Y'all, I'm so excited. So I love Edgar Allan Poe, and him and I, we share a birthday, so I just, I love him, and I love his poetry. Well, here in Virginia Beach, at this building right here, they're having an Edgar Allan Poe speakeasy. I found out about this months ago, but they didn't have any in my city. So now that I found one here in the city, we're going, so let's go. Try it with me. Just take a sip. 
taste it and try it. Cheers. Oh, sweet. It has a cinnamony taste. Remember this well, friend. I'll accept it, I'll accept it. So shortly after he was separate from his two siblings and taken in by the Allen family of Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> How he gets Allen in his name. So they didn't really formally adopt him, but they sought him into young adulthood. His father sent him to West Point. He had a stint there, brought him back. When he came back, his mother, his foster mother, died of this disease that we all know as... <laughs> Regrettably, yes. <laughs> so Edgar was dealt with much pain loss, disease, and death. And so he found a lot of companionship in that of animals, and specifically cats. Yeah. That's right. He found his muse in the name cat was Katarina. It was a black cat. She would be known to be by his sad sight, sigh rather, daily and nightly as he scribbled away. Allegedly, she would purr in approval of anything that she thought was worthy. Which brings us to our next tale. Friends, please put your paws together for the black cat. <laughs> Everything was in slow motion. Yeah. So, 
And they have like, Baltimore is just riddled with Poe stuff. So if you love Poe, hit Baltimore. If you love Poe, hit Richmond, Virginia, because there's a museum there as well. Yeah. Good stuff. So, anything Edgar Allan Poe, I'm all about. Ronnie's a vodka guy, so he's all about this Nevermore drink. I'm definitely a, a, a not brandy, but um, bourbon, whiskey, that, that's my, you know, that's the Scottish girl in me. But he's all about the vodka, so let's try it. Fruity. That's probably why he likes it, because it's fruity. Her name is Miss Virginia Clem. Poe is now 27 years old. She is the ripe old age of 13. <laughs> it gets worse. <laughs> They're also first cousins. Now <laughs> it's strange and unusual the relationship like this would be in today's times. Rest assured that back in the day, dreams such as this would be considered pretty fucking strange and unusual as well. <laughs> and the weirdness continues as Miss Virginia Clinton's mother is so approving of their union that she lives with the couple throughout their marriage and the entirety of both their lifespans. Can you imagine living with your in-laws until you die? Now the year is 1845 and Poe has just and his most recent work, which he sells to a local newspaper for $9, a whopping 350 in today's currency. And that was widely criticized, once again, for its central theme around animals, as well as the premature death of young women. His blissful time will soon be cut short as his bride becomes bedridden. Many complain that he is writing his wife into an early grave, but that simply isn't true. It's just the progression of this disease, a disease that continues to ravage his life time and time again. Perhaps this is Poe's way of grappling with the idea that he is soon to say goodbye to the love of his life. And with that, we present to you our creative adaptation of arguably one of Poe's most famous works of all, The Raven. He probably takes the alcohol. 
very different palettes, us too. Good though. Good. <laughs> He's over here cheesing. <laughs> Do that here in Virginia. Yeah. Yo, Virginia Beach, you're wild. Yeah. That's how you do a three show night. Now, our beloved Edgar moves on with, in the world with no partner and very little family left. Like many of us would do. He turns to the bottle in his time of strife, drinking very heavily and writing of even deeper and darker subjects. Until one night, one fateful night in 1849 in October, our Edgar is found half drunk, mumbling incoherent sentences Wearing clothes that are not his own. <laughs> Been there. She knows. <laughs> Wait, you were there. <laughs> and it's on this night where our dear Edgar passes on without us. It is still unclear exactly what caused Edgar Allan Poe's death, but one thing is clear. He left behind one damn good legacy. Cheers to that! Yeah. The reason we're all here. In comes a new character. One who we only know by the moniker we've given, the Poe Toaster. This Poe Toaster shows up at Edgar's gravesite hundred years later, and leaves behind three long stem roses on the eve of his birthday every year, mm -hmm. and one half-drank bottle of cognac. It's still unclear whether this Poe toaster actually drank the bottle or simply Poe one out for the homie. <laughs> Poe. Richness, this 
masquerade. Now, there were seven rooms in which Prospero's friends boogie. In his winding palace, little more than one room could be seen at one time. And in each room, there were three tall pointed windows of colored glass. The same color hues in each room. In the first room, there were blue cloth hangings on the wall and blue were its windows. The second room had purple hangings on the wall and purple were its windows. The third was green, the fourth was yellow, the fifth was white, the sixth was violet. But there was the seventh room. And the seventh room was... Red! No, it was black! <laughs> This room, yes, the color of the windows were red. A deep blood color. Now each room did cast a strange light indeed as it colored the shapes and the faces of the dancers inside it. So <laughs>